We know that uh, Japan unilaterally has moved its uh, fishery two degrees north of where it was last year, which is 120 miles. We know that Korea said they're going to do the same. And in our view, with the killing of hundreds of thousands of salmon and steelhead every year, as well as killing hundreds of thousands of immature salmon, dolphins, whales, birds, or other marine life, we think that something has to be done. But in Tokyo and the other markets of the Far East, the demand for fish is huge and growing. The government points out the fleet is legally fishing in international waters, and it is monitoring the catch. We'll make an investigation. Then, uh, after that, we will decide it is harmful to the environment or not. You simply can't put a thousand boats up there for six months out of the year laying that kind of monofilament net and not have a, an absolute devastation of a major marine ecosystem. Just to give you a, a little info there, uh, our last report from the U.S. Coast Guard was 12 hours ago from Alaska and there was 21 Taiwanese and six unidentified vessels actively fishing outside the northern boundary. You know, David Suzuki likes to refer to the canaries that used to be taken into the mines. And, and when the canaries would uh, die, they realized the gas levels were getting to the point when it was a warning that they had to get out of there. I think that members of the environmental movement who are going out there and taking these kind of risks on behalf of all of us, and in fact risking their lives, are issuing that warning. And it simply is not the type of a warning that can wait until the, the political will uh, builds up a, upon government, where we start to hear such things as, uh, well, we're going to do a study, we're going to find out what the effects really are. My God, we can see from what's going on out there that it's an incredibly serious. Uh, the, the thought that those birds are being killed, the thought that there are species that are that could be off the face of the earth. It's a shame, it's a real shame that Seacoast is doing the work that our government should be doing, and they're doing it in spite of our government. They have to go around the government to try and get the data. Whatever steps are necessary, if it includes sanctions, going to the United Nations, whatever has to be done, has to be done forcibly by the government of Canada. I'm fed up with listening to you know, General talk about it a research program and a, and a talk about an observer program that isn't, it isn't the drop of the bucket out there. Some fear that predictions Greenpeace has made for years now that um, the um, basic depopulation of the ocean through these invisible nets is resulting in such large so-called incidental catches of marine mammals like dolls, porpoises and even larger whales and dolphins and seals, you name it, that the numbers are reduced to the point where recruitment is becoming impossible. In other words, um, there aren't enough mating pairs to conceive offspring or even to meet each other in order to conceive offspring. And um, I really hope we haven't reached that point yet. But I'm afraid if we delay any longer in stopping the use of drift nets, um, there will be a point of no return. It's really, a, it's really an environmental holocaust. It's like. It's an ecological genocide. You know, the word side means to kill, and the word gene refers to a genome. And it's, it's killing every genome in the ocean. And once you've done that, you've killed the ocean. You're leaving behind a watery desert.